Board is established pursuant to Section 519.13 of the Ohio Revised Code by the Anderson Township Trustees to provide administrative relief, relief to any person or entity adversely affected by the Anderson Township Zoning Resolution. Uh, uh, Betty, would you please call the roll? Rick Everton. Here. Brian Ellis. Here. Fred Hayes. Here. Brian Sanders. Here. Here. Um, thank you for coming to this meeting. Please be aware that this meeting is audio and videotaped and may be carried live on uh, cable television. I'll outline our procedures. A summary of the appeal is presented by the staff and the appellant will present its case. The board members may then ask questions of the appellant. After that, all persons supporting the appeal will be permitted to testify one at a time after being recognized by the chairman. When those uh, persons supporting the appeal are finished, those opposed to the appeal will then be permitted to testify and or ask questions uh, after being recognized by the chairman. Uh, all persons wishing to testify, whether for or against an appeal, may only do so after being sworn in. When testifying, each person must come forward to the podium, either one, after being recognized, speak into the microphone, state their name, address, and any affiliation to the case. Um, all testimonies to be given to the board. Um, no comments are to be directed to the appellant or anyone in the audience. The board will hear only new, non-repetitive evidence or questions. Uh, should, should someone wish to show support of previous testimony, they may do so by following the testimony procedures and stating their support of previous testimony. Uh, now, will all persons uh, who may test give testimony this evening please stand, raise your right hand, and swear for him. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Um, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? I just have one quick announcement. We have our newest member here with us, Brian Johnson, and he'll be joining us on the board next month. Great. Looks like he meets the criteria of having a first name of Brian, like <laughs> what will now be a majority of the board. Uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to maybe visit with Brian when we're uh, finished up this evening. Um, next up, approval of minutes. Uh, I know I gave some comments to Betty. I don't know if others had the opportunity to. I did as well. Okay. And so then. I guess a quick motion to approve the minutes uh, as so modified. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. I'll abstain since I wasn't here. Aye. Uh, consideration of case 1, 2013, BZA. Allison, would you like to sure. give us the summary of this one? Sure. This was submitted by Tony Mudo on behalf of BEE Holdings, who's the property owner. This does involve several properties on Round Bottom Road, which is uh, the Evans Landscaping site. The majority of this area is zoned ID industrial development, with a small portion being H Riverfront. And the variance request is to allow a fence six feet six inches in height, where a maximum height of four feet is allowed, and a fence of nine feet in height, where a maximum height of six feet is allowed, per section 171.9 of the zoning resolution. A quick site description for you. This covers approximately 90 acres and over 3,000 uh, feet of frontage on Round Bottom Road. The topography there is relatively flat and drops off at the river. The existing use is Evans Landscaping. We can see here some surrounding conditions. Um, this small portion of green here is the section of H Riverfront, while the rest of the site is ID Industrial Development. Um, Surrounding conditions are the Little Miami River to the north. Evans Landscaping does own some surrounding properties, as well as the Brewer Company and a single-family residence to the west. Um, the applicant is requesting this variance to allow fencing, which exceeds the maximum four feet allowed in this front yard area, and then exceeding the maximum six feet allowed in this rear area. So a bit of a history, a consent decree was signed on September 28, 2012 for this property. Multiple break-ins have occurred on the site, and the applicant would like to decrease the likelihood of theft in the future here. We can see an aerial photo of some of the conditions of the site. Um, you can see that there are some buildings along here in front of where the proposed fence location is. Here's a proposed site plan showing both the location of the proposed nine-foot enclosure, which is behind those buildings that I mentioned before, 
as well as the location of the existing fence along Brown, Round Bottom Road, which the applicant is proposing to add one foot of additional height to. So the purpose of the one foot additional height uh, in the front yard area is to accommodate barbed wire, whereas the fenced in enclosure area is an eight foot tall fence, again with the additional one foot to accommodate barbed wire. We've got some photos of existing conditions as well as the typical proposed fence that the applicant is requesting. Uh, this top photo does show the existing fence along Round Bottom Road, while the bottom is typical equipment that would be contained within the fenced in enclosure area. On the right, you see that typical fence style. Here's some snowy pictures of existing <laughs> conditions. Um, looking west from the proposed location of the fence so that you can see some of the surrounding conditions. Again, looking east at the proposed location of the fenced area, you see some of the equipment that would be contained within that enclosed area um, that the applicant has had difficulties with being broken into. And then this uh, bottom left is looking south from the proposed location of the fence. It will tie into the existing structure here. And then a view looking northwest at the existing fence along Round Bottom Road. So staff's findings um, were that the requested variance is not substantial. The nine foot high fenced enclosure area is proposed to be located uh, in a section of the site where a building up to 35 feet in height could be located. So this is uh, much less substantial than a structure of that size. The proposed addition of one foot in height to the existing five and a half foot tall fence along Round Bottom Road, it will not substantially modify the existing fencing in that area. It really is just to add the additional one foot in height for barbed wire. The requested variance would not substantially alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Again, the first request for the fencing along Round Bottom Road is just to add on to the existing. Uh, and the second request for the uh, nine foot high fencing in the enclosed area is located such that it would not uh, create a substantial detriment to surrounding properties. The variance would not adversely affect the delivery of government services. The property owner's predicament could not be feasibly obviated through other methods. The company has in the past um, attempted to observe the person breaking into the site and has even placed GPS tracking units in some of their equipment but has not uh, been able to catch them. And then finally, the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement will be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? Um, I have oh, one. Before I'd like to um, disclose something. I, I work for the Metropolitan Sewer District of Greater Cincinnati. We have a couple sewer projects along the Round Bottom Broadwell Road area. Um, I do not believe, and I did some checking there, that we don't, uh, not, and there are no pending easements needed from Evans Landscaping or BEE Holdings. Um, I do want to note that they are cut through contract work for us, but I'm not involved with any of it. I checked with our legal counsel, and she felt comfortable that there would, no be, would not be a conflict, but she said to bring it up to everyone here tonight to still let everybody know that there is business that does with my employer. Thank you, Jim. Allison, the consent. The staff. The, uh, questions of the staff. Allison, the consent decree. Yes. Could, uh, could you tell me a little bit more about that? I'd what is it, yeah. Sure. Um, that was the result of an ongoing litigation between the township as well as Evans Landscaping, and the consent decree signing was kind of a clean slate in that section of the township. Does it have anything material to do with this? Not really. <laughs> no. Okay. And. And a second question, Allison, mm -hmm. was the um, the history of the uh, uh, of the break-ins or thefts or or vandalism. Have, have we substantiated that with the uh, with the police or is yes, that what the um, officer here? Yes, the as well as Mr. Boyman can speak more to that. Okay. And um, are you done, for Frank? <coughs> I had the same question as Fred. Um, is the uh, barbed wire that's not around the enclosure but along mm -hmm. uh, the road, that is, uh, I saw marked here somewhere, I think on Mr. Muto's uh, Exhibit C, 175 feet and it's shown in red. Yes. So that's, that's the uh, area we're talking that's about. The area along Brown Bottom Road. Uh, barbed wire, okay. And... Um, The uh, allowed fence height is four feet in the That's front yard, but there's right. a five and a half foot fence there now. What's mm -hmm. the, uh, is that non-conforming or what's the history on that, if um, you know? That would have been kind of granted through the consent decree. 
Oh, through the <laughs> consent decree. Okay. Oh, so it is connected. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And, um, you know, we talked about this last time, but just to be clear, barbed wire, front yard, backyard, in front of my house, okay. there's no limit on barbed Correct. wire. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions of the board? Uh, would the applicant like to uh, present its case, please? Either one. Do you want the laser pointer? Hold on. Push it forward. Oh, it doesn't go forward, does it? <laughs> there we go. I don't want to get too far away from, from the. Uh, there. And how's the head barrel? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, my name is Tony Muto. I'm general counsel for uh, the applicant, BE Holdings. And um, first, I appreciate the uh, supportive report from, from staff. Uh, the staff helped us uh, with providing some of the input we needed to put together the application, so we appreciate that. And we appreciate the uh, the board's time here this evening. I'll make a few uh, introductory comments uh, real briefly. I don't want to repeat too much of what was in the narrative that was submitted along with our request for the variance, but I do want to have also Mr. Jim Bailey, uh, Vice President for um, the applicant, to make a few comments on some of the background just to amplify some of the points I think that uh, Mr. Ha Hazy brought up. Is that the right pronunciation? It's Hayes. Hayes. You asked about the history of some of the break-ins. We have some input I'd like to provide through Mr. Bailey and also through Corporal uh, Boyman, who's here. Uh, so just real, real briefly, uh, we're asking for uh, a variance if I can, uh, for two different items. First, this fence here, it's hard to see the color on this uh, overhead, but in the packet, this is Exhibit C. It shows up better. There's a red line. Uh, it's 175 feet. It's existing fence. It's five and a half feet uh, high. And as Allison pointed out uh, correctly, it was part of the consent decree. So it's grandfathered in at five and a half feet, Mr. Eliff. Uh, so that's why the four foot versus five and a half foot discrepancy exists, but grandfathered in. So we want to put another foot of barbed wire uh, along the uh, round bottom road portion. Then there's about a 40 or 50 foot portion perpendicular to round bottom that ties into an existing house that's right there. Uh, so in total, it would end up being six and a half feet, which is a little lower than what this, this board approved for Coney Island uh, at one of the last meetings. The area in blue is 175 feet on the short end, 350 feet on the long end, and that would be the area that we would want to enclose uh, a very large quantity of property. The property would include uh, vehicles, it would include uh, hand, hand uh, power tools, it would include materials, things that today, items that today are in this area of the yard that are just ripe for picking by, by break-ins. So Mr. Bailey will comment more on what has been taken over the years uh, of the break-ins. Uh, this and I, I, we call it an enclosure. It's not really a fence because it's not separating uh, the property of BE from somebody else's property. It's, it's a, it would be built out of eight foot chain link fence and then a foot of uh, barbed wire on the top of it. And there's several points to, uh, I think, illustrate here. First of all, at eight feet uh, or at nine feet high, this fence would still be lower than the building, which is right here, into which the fence would tie. The building is a two-story building, so it's about 20 feet. Uh, and importantly, the uh, staff uh, has already approved a building extension that would come off the back of the exi existing building, and the extension is also 20 feet high. It's important to point out because this enclosure would be less than half the height of the existing building. Another important point, I think, to illustrate is that this enclosure, which starts right about here and uh, covers the, the distance I'm pointing out with the uh, marker, uh, cannot be seen from round bottom, which is right here. It can't be seen because 
Uh, it's hard to see in this particular uh, chart here, but it shows it better on some of the photographs in the, in the packet. Uh, there is an existing wrought iron, wrought iron fence along part of the property. Uh, that wrought iron fence is on an elevated berm, and there's thick, dense vegetation and trees along this portion of Round Bottom. And then in this area here, uh, there's an existing couple of homes and some other structures which will completely block, completely block this enclosed fence area on the property. So any vehicle or passerby or bicyclist coming up and down Round Bottom would not see this nine foot enclosed area. Uh, additionally, this enclosed area is small compared to the total site. The total site is 90 acres. So uh, it'll be a very, very, very small percentage of the total space that's existing on this 90 acre site. We, we, we believe that uh, the facts will support the position that this is being done for defensive purposes, quite frankly, and Mr. Bailey and, and Corporal Boyman will uh, point out that. Uh, I want to come back after they finish and just sum summarize, but I do think that uh, the enclosed area outlined here in blue and the red fence area that we would add a foot to is totally consistent with the requirements for variance under Section 184.2. And some of that was summarized in the staff report, but I'll add a few more comments at the end. So at this point, if there are questions of, of me based on what I just described or based on what the report gave, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, if not, Mr. Bailey would like to come here and make a few comments on some of the history and some of the background on why this is required. Um, all right. Do we have any questions of Mr. Muta? I don't. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. I, one of the questions that wasn't clear to me in the report, the purpose for the train cars, those train cars will remain. I hope I'm calling them the proper things. Those will remain. I'm just curious. They, they, are they will. they will part of the security, I guess, of the property? Is that? I, I'm not sure the history. Mr. Bailey can address that when he, uh, well, Jim, what's the history on the train cars? Wait a second, Jim. Um, we, we need to have him at a podium if we're going to talk. So, okay. Uh, if you would go pick a podium, uh, state your name, relation to the case, so we have it on the record. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Bailey, and I'm Vice President of Evans Landscaping, Anderson Township Residence. Um, to answer the train car, the train cars were on the property when we acquired the property many years ago. And, you know, they're, A, they were put there for basically storage units, you know, and, uh, but B, they're a great line of defense. I think you can see in another picture that they have sliding doors that open to the inside of the lot, and they're probably 12 or 14 foot tall, so it would be quite an accomplishment for somebody to get up mm -hmm. over the top of them. And, you know, they got quarter inch steel, so they're not going to cut through them. And basically, this interior fence would tie in, you know, to the ends of the train cars. And then there's a small section of fence between the train cars and the houses that will be filled in with the fencing as well. So, you know, they're, uh, they're there. They're very hard to move. And we've never moved them. And we gotcha. store things in them. So it's not something you guys rolled in at some point for some purpose regarding security. It was not there. And you've taking advantage of them to the best exactly just using them you know like I said they were on the property they're probably worth more in scrap than they are as far <laughs> as a fence right. but you know they're there and we're leaving them there for now yeah and those rail cars are uh, well shown in exhibits J2 yeah, and uh, so. J3 I believe J4 even in, in the packet and I guess while I'm while I'm asking the red it wasn't clear to me I guess where the red fence eventually ties in. I, I'd like to make a comment there, something you can't tell. Where the red fence is, do you see the driveway that goes back to the residence to the left of us? Right there, Jim? No, down, go to the other end. Below it. Yeah, right there. Oh. Okay, that driveway, you know, uh, there, it was mentioned that there is a residence next to us. I believe that's residential, but that is a business. You know, a guy keeps uh, irrigation equipment in there, so he doesn't live there. 
and uh, but down that driveway and along our property line all the way to the rear of the property we now have existing chain link fence with barbed wire okay. and the reason we want to put it on this section in the front is because that'll finish off the barbed wire oh, okay. and we're basically trying to build two lines of defense here you know first of all I'd rather be out looking at a job trying to get a contract somewhere than I would up here trying to get a fence to keep thieves out but we're trying to build two lines of defense there is a, uh, a very well-known thief in the area um, I could mention names but you can set your watch over the past four to five years of when this guy is in jail and when he's out of jail he's got a drug problem and he doesn't care he lives on YMCA Road right next to us and we have security cameras out there we have lighting that cost a lot of money to install we have of uh, cameras the individual you know the cameras are as plain as day they're advertised he'll walk in 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 broad daylight he'll walk in in the middle of the night in front of the camera and he simply pulls a hood over his head which I think the sheriffs could probably testify to a lot of this he'll he'll go about his way take his do his business and move on so you know this is not going to stop the attempts it's just hopefully going to slow this guy down and maybe make it easier to go somewhere else and steal everything that he steals first of all I don't know if maybe somebody could flip to a couple pictures of the trucks all right well what we're talking some of the trucks that maybe a close-up uh, I can tell you the exhibit number if that helps it's exhibit a1 and a2 a1 and a2 all right so you can see here you know we we take great pride in keeping our equipment looking good and buying good equipment and we put toolboxes on the trucks between the cab and the bed you know to so you know the men can keep their tools or chainsaws or cutoff saws in there you know from a business standpoint you know late we like to save labor for obvious reasons so if you own the business do you want people taking chainsaws out of the trucks every night moving them into the shop putting them back the next morning back and forth so we put toolboxes on them they're all lockable well there wasn't a great problem until probably you know three four years ago but th the locks don't stop these people you know it's to a point now where I told them to stop locking the toolboxes at one point because even if there's not something in there if it's locked if they think there's something in there and they take a spud bar and they pop the toolbox open and then there's five hundred dollars damage to the toolbox and the lock the things that they steal some people would say well why don't you turn that into your insurance it's all stuff that's you know five hundred to twelve hundred dollars stuff that's you know in their individual isolated cases and it's below your deductible it's stuff that can be sold easily at the flea markets around here uh, you know I I have worked closely in the past two and a half or three years with some names you'll probably recognize Bill Rarick Sean Cox Jason Hoverkamp Brian Williams Brian Hayes Rick Topher Adam McMillan Mr. Hartzler you know at, I think that you're going to be given some testimony to where we only had four recorded break-ins last year at this property but it's not just at this property it's everywhere down in this area I mean it, it it's it's unbelievable what goes on down there they working with mr. Rarick you know without I didn't have to talk them into it a lot but they set up a stakeout for two weekends in a row in one of the houses in the front and we staged a, a blower with a GPS unit in an effort to try this you know this money was paid for out of taxpayers dollars you know they said that you know the overtime costs and things like that so you know it's obvious that there was a big interest from the Hamilton County and the local sheriffs to catch this guy or they wouldn't have invested three or four guys in this thing you know all night Friday night all night Saturday and all night Sunday night 
you know, for two or three weekends. And as luck would have it, you know, it didn't happen. Um, you know, down the street on Broadwell Road, it's not just us, it's, it's Madison Tree, it's Wesling Tree Service, it's Loizo Landscaping. You know, here, here's how bad it is. These people, and, and they don't care, and I'm, I'm trying to just build a case here that we're just, you know, trying to build two lines of defense. You know, I had some ATVs and some four-wheelers. They were in a locked garage, you know, a heavily locked garage. You know, the doors were broken in with spud bars and cutoff saws to get in the doors. They stole my nephew's, my 12-year-old nephew's brand new dirt bike that he got for Christmas, walked it out the door. So after that, I got one of those heavy-duty cables with a plastic cover that you see at Home Depot. And I literally put that through the frames of my four-wheelers, wrapped it around a steel pole of the building, and put a $50 lock on it. Well... They broke in again and put a giant rock or a boulder under the lock. And, you know, this rock was the size of a basketball. And you could tell they took a hammer literally for four hours and beat this lock into a million pieces and still stole my daughter's four-wheeler. I mean, you, it, it's, you know, unfortunately, somebody is probably going to take, you know, things in their own hands at some point down in this area. That's how bad it's getting. All right. Well, thank you. I think we've got a pretty good handle on that. Uh, questions that we might have for uh, Mr. Muto and Mr. Bailey? I do have. Have you been successful in arresting the individual that's, um, have, you, have, you, have you ever caught him? I don't think Evans, you know, as far as a case of it, stealing something from Evans, he's been, we've been successful. But I think Union Township, Claremont County, caught him stealing something off a of Madison tree. And then he's back in jail now. And uh, so, as far as we're concerned, no, but other surrounding people. And, uh, you know, last Christmas, they, st they stole the four-wheeler off of us, drove it out the back of the lot, parked it in a honeysuckle. One of the sheriffs called us and said they saw it. We took it back up to the office. The building was locked up, so we couldn't get in there because somebody had the key. We parked it in front of the office under the lights and took the key out. They stole it again that night. I mean, and, it, and it's not been recovered. You know, we've lost four big ATVs, and it, it just doesn't stop. Other questions from the board? Yes, if I may. Uh, it's not clear to me where the at least two uh, gates will be located. Uh, All right, I can show you that on the on the bigger site plan. Um, Once again, to, to back way up, my point to the, to the front red fence section is when we put barbed wire on that, that'll complete right. a total enclosure of barbed wire. So barbed this wire. person's are going to have to jump a six-foot, six barbed wire fence and then jump an eight-foot fence with barbed wire on it, and hopefully that slows things down. Just if, while you're on that point, that you uh, mentioned a, sorry, my back's to you, but right. you mentioned a total enclosure and I did hear your point that the bar, uh, there's an existing barbed wire fence down the driveway there. Right here, right now, here, and all back through here. It goes all the way back? I don't think the, the barbed wire goes all the way back. But the fence does. But the does. fence does. But the areas, you know, when somebody's trying to steal a generator that weighs three or 400 pounds, right, you know, yeah, they I, want to jump the fence right here or right in here and drag it away quickly. They so don't want to drag it. substantially yeah. encloses the property is what right. you're saying. Right. They don't want to drag it all back through the mud and everything back here. Um, and then right. you got the river on the back and all the fencing in the front. So to answer your question about the gates, there'll be one gate right here and another gate right here. And eventually we have an addition that we're applying for. We already have the zoning approval for a building addition right here. And then this fence will just tie into the building, and then this little section will go away. So there'll just be two gates? Two gates, right here and right here. And the, the section here to the east will all be, um, uh, For that's, not, that's not the east, that's to, that's to the west, will all be solid. It's just... just all be what? It'll all be solid fence. No well, no. It's, there's about 
a 20 foot section of fence from the building to where the gate starts. Mm -hmm. Then there's a gate. Mm -hmm. Then there's another 30 or 40 feet of fence that ties into a train car. Then this is a train car, this is a house, this is a train car, this is a house. So for the most part, that those houses and train cars are our barriers in the front right. with right. a little small section, you know, filling in a five foot gap. Here is where the fence starts again and comes all the way around. There's not going to be a, a gate at the fence, the new six foot fence along the road? No, sir. That, that existing fence, all we're doing is adding the brackets and the barbed wire like you saw in the typical photo. And, and that is well out of the right of way. There was some worry of the brackets come out on an angle, mm -hmm. an encroachment on the right of way, but we're yeah. 10 or 15 feet beyond that, and Allison will testify to that. Mm -hmm. And, in, you know, we have six foot fence here. One, we want eight foot fence here plus barbed wire. When we originally asked for this, I don't know all the dates and all the every detail, but we were led to believe via email that an eight foot fence was okay. Tony can probably elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, when we immediately heard that word, you know, we want this in to try to stop this. We purchased the eight foot fence. You know, there's a picture of it here sitting on the lot. I mean, we spent $5,000 to buy the fence, and the vendor won't take it back, or they'll take it back with a 20 or 30% sure. restocking fee. Right. I think Mr. Uh, Mudo explained that to us in his presentation. Okay. In the materials that we received. Other questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, I have. Yes. Uh, there's a property... Um, west of your property where the red fence ends in the driveway and then there's a uh, similarly fenced in it looks like somebody's using that for storage, storage yard. business Correct. is their predicament any different from yours their storage yard is just more for like empty semi trailers um, not something that an individual could grab and run off with it and sell it at the street corner. You know, the things we're getting hit on is $850 cutoff saws, chainsaws, backpack blowers, generators, and so you know it's now it's different than you yeah, say. Yeah, the, in stuff that you can sell and I mean I've had anonymous people that live on the street send me letters and call me and they say we know where this person's outsourcing it here's the name of the street here's the name of the guy mm -hmm. well they can't unless they physically catch this person sure. doing it they can't do anything about it um, is there the 175 feet along the front it's a five and a half foot fence now it is is the thought I'm putting barbed wire on that that it actually is going to stop somebody from using that as a point to get in or is it that just that it's creating a well, image of I mean, protection I've seen you up at the racket club playing tennis before and stuff <laughs> and if you if you're running you could jump and clear a five and a half foot tall chain link fence without barbed wire that's sticking out <laughs> on an angle okay well. <laughs> well, you you could you could clear that without the barbed wire, but when you put barbed wire on it that's sticking forward on a 45 degree angle and it's 12 inches higher in elevation, you're going to think two or three times before you run down there and jump across that. So you're saying you think it's actually going to serve a purpose of? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. And then when the when the individual, I mean, he, the one that I'm not saying it's all him, but the frequency of it. When he sits over here and he sees this fence in here is installed with barbed wire and he sees this is installed barbed wire, he's going to go down the street more than likely. Unfortunately, I feel sorry for the oh, yeah. neighbors, but, you know, it's not as easy. It's, it's very easy. He jumps that fence and before there was nobody living in this house doesn't care what time of day or anything else he's in the trucks damages the trucks takes what he wants and goes on other questions Anybody? i guess my only question um 
is, is a follow-up on, on Brian's along the 175 feet. As you know, in the, in the River Downs case, we limited the extra height fence only to the areas that were necessary to provide security and did not approve it for any area that was along Kellogg that was not providing direct security in that case to the barns. Uh, but, but you're saying that, and I guess we can check with, with Corporal Boyman when he talks, but you're saying that that line along that along the road is necessary to protect other items that are on the yard? There, yeah, there's no doubt. These, this isn't the only spot where we park trucks, okay? But this is going to be the spot where we park the, let's call it the landscape trucks and the mechanics they trucks have loose, loose. that have all the valuable tools in them. But, you know, they're after CB radios, they're after, uh, what do you call it, radar detectors, anything. And, you know, we got 150 trucks all parked out here. I don't want the guys in our lot, you know, stealing gas, stealing whatever. So, you know, this is, is a two-fold deal. You know, it's a double line of, of defense to get in here, but it's a single line defense to keep them out of our shop. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I could ask Corporal Boyman to yes, I say if anybody come else to the like podium. To Please. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Corporal Dave Boyman. I'm the Crime Prevention Officer for Anderson Township uh, through the Sheriff's Office. Uh, does the Board have any questions for me at this point in time? Well, I'd, I'd just be curious to echo uh, the comments of Mr. Mudo and Mr. Bailey about the history of the break-ins from your perspective and maybe what kind of uh, demands that's placed on your office. Uh, yeah, I think the, that they brought up some very good points in regards to this area, and you have to kind of keep in mind that because of the nature of this setup, it is an isolated area, um, but the, the concentrated areas are big business and commercial areas, obviously. Uh, the two people that I would come into play at this point would be Evans and the Park District. They have probably the most wide supply and inventory of commercial vehicles and power tools and et cetera, et cetera, to do their business. So that's probably why this is a magnet to these types of individuals who are looking to get their hands on this equipment. Uh, on, a law enforcement, on a law enforcement crime prevention standpoint, I would probably say that I would have to give kudos to any residential or commercial business who is going to take the extra time, efforts, monetary situations to improve security at their site. And I'll give you an example. Um, uh, quite a few years ago, Loizo, as you mentioned, uh, was one of the businesses that was down the street from Evans. And they were getting hit very hard, more than Evans was getting hit uh, from individuals. Uh, they were getting their facility broken into numerous times. These people were being captured on surveillance. They, they, they don't care. They do take the extra time and effort to disguise themselves with hoodies and you know, face coverings and wear gloves, and uh, they know how to play the system and how to work it. Uh, there is one service that we do offer through the Sheriff's Office is called a commercial uh, security survey. We do that for residences also. What that is is I would go down and I would do a site inspection based on my training to your home or to your commercial area and give recommendations on improving site security there for your specific needs. When I went down and did one at Loizos, um, per the owner, one of the things that I recommended, and these, keep in mind, are recommendations that I would give um, for that owner or that residential owner to improve safety and security, one of them was to improve the fencing down there at his site because it was very inadequate. Um, Loizos obviously is not there anymore. They've moved to another location. However, um, this kind of comes into play with why we're here this evening. So one of my recommendations was improving fencing down there. If I would go to Evans and if they would recommend or ask me to come down and do a commercial security survey at their site, I probably would at some point in time by doing a survey on their property, whatever site they have and they're looking at, if their security or their lock-in facilities, their lighting or whatever is not adequate, Based on my recommendations and training, that would be one of my recommendations to them would to be to improve fencing or what have you. So I have to give them, you know, the appropriate amount of, uh, you know, um, respect that they're doing something. 
instead of just taking recommendations that people are giving them like sometimes it does occur and then people don't do anything and then they're hit again and they wonder why. Uh, keep in mind nothing is 100%. You're not going to stop this type of behavior no matter if you make this like Fort Knox and have, you know, multi-million dollar facilities. It's, it's still going to happen. They're going to find other ways to do what they got to do. But if you at least take into a standpoint the nature of what you're working with and doing the proper things on a law enforcement crime prevention standpoint, you're going beyond what others are doing. So I think that that is good for them. Um, one of the basic premises of barrier protection and target hardening would be a fencing system. And that is obviously going to deny, deter, delay somebody from gaining access into these facilities or these areas. What I would recommend is improve on fencing, but then I will also then tell the owner you then would have to comply with local, state, government laws and regulations pertaining to fencing requirements, whether it's state law, because I know the state of Ohio does have fencing laws. And then you have local laws for fencing requirements or barbed wire, like they're asking, to make sure that you're in compliance. That's nothing that I would recommend them to do. But they would obviously take my recommendations on stating, hey, put fencing in around here or put lighting in here and make sure you're in compliance with local ordinances. So that kind of is how that works out. Now, keep in mind also, he made a good point that there is a specific individual that does plague this area, and that is true. But on my standpoint, I would also suggest to keep in mind that it doesn't matter if this individual is locked up or not, moves away, goes away, or whatever the circumstances are. These individuals share information with their cohorts, and these people will then go into this area and they will plague this area and try and pick it clean for their benefits because they all work together. As we do in law enforcement and, and as the community, they're always one step ahead of us, so we have to try and tweak ourselves to try and get one step ahead of them. So it's not just one individual, it's people that they share information with. And it has occurred in other areas. Uh, uh, Brewer, who was across the street from Evans, uh, is no longer there. They've moved. And they were plagued also very hard. The park district has been hit very hard. Um, it's just the nature of the beast with this area. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, does the board have questions of uh, Corporal Boyman? Thank you. Thank you. I, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, professionally, you think that a, the adding barbed wire to the existing fence is a, is a valuable deterrent? Well, like I said, on, on a professional standpoint, I have to be totally honest with you. If I would recommend Evans or a specific A or B property owner or, or business to um, utilize fencing for their facility, like I stated, I would just recommend a fencing system. It would be then up to them to make sure that they're in compliance with specific regulations regarding if it's barbed wire or electric fencing or an alarm fence to make sure that they're in compliance with uh, the regulations. Um, is barbed wire something that is a deterrent? Absolutely. You, you see it in a prison setting, there's a reason for it. You see it in a military setting, there's a reason for it. Because these target areas are being protected for specific reasons. I think we have to kind of go back also to kind of realize because of the nature of their inventory, like these two gentlemen have stated, these people want to get their hands on their equipment because after the downturn of the economy, these power tools, these metals are huge. Anything with a resale value is huge. And unfortunately, this area has a high concentration of those types of, of items. And that's why it's, it's widely utilized for the criminal element. Um, that goes into play with other things that you can utilize in a crime prevention standpoint, whether it's lighting, alarms, detection systems, surveillance. But higher, fencing, higher fencing helps. Higher fencing helps, but he made a good point, too. Somebody could climb over it quickly, jump over it, get a barrier to get up on and go over it. You're getting another layer of protection on your existing feature by utilizing a different type of method. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Please tell them about the last uh, report. Yes. What happened? Uh, the last report that Evans actually had was back in November of 2012. Um, a male subject entered their secured fence area of Evans Landscaping. 
and attempted to remove two uh, chainsaws from the interior of a fleet vehicle. Entry was gained by utilizing, uh, of turning a bucket upside down and climbing over the fence. So that individual used the barrier to get up over that fence. So it, it does occur and anything to increase that layer of security, if it's allowable, then it's always something that is good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wishford, I want to uh, amplify a point that Mr. Bailey made in replying to your question on the fencing, existing fencing. Uh, the, the enclosed area that's being, that would be built is roughly 70,000 square feet. And I know many of you have been by the Evans property. There's a lot of property, and we couldn't possibly fit all of it inside of that 70,000 square foot enclosure. So the barbed wire is needed at the roadway to deter people from getting over there and getting the other property that will not be behind that nine foot enclosure. That, that's the reason why that fence line at the road is important. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate that. Um, that's it. Uh, anybody else like to testify? Is this something new, Jim? Yes, it is. Um, I don't know if there's a picture here that shows our existing nice looking landscaping with the picket fence in front of our property. Is that it's an, an exhibit, an exhibit you can pull up there? J, J1. Um, well, part of the dissent decree mm -hmm. is that we're going to continue that theme all the way across the front of our property. So I would call this barbed wire kind of a short-term method until the budget or the funds allow the installation of that picket fence and the taller mound and the trees and the bushes. And that in itself creates a bigger barrier for people to get over, but we just don't have it in the budget to do it this year. So, so that would be in front of the barbed wire fence you're going to put in? Yeah, it, it, be another the same thing would continue all the way, way down, down to the corner of the property, and then the fence with the barbed wire would be behind it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, it's exhibit J1. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the one other thing, the, the one other new thing that I'd like to say is, you know, We've done, we've done the lighting, we've done the security cameras, we've hired private security, we spent, you know, close to 30 grand on private security, we've staked it out. I don't know what else to do. All right, thank you. I'll make just a brief closing comment. Uh, I don't want to go into the detail of why we think we meet all the criteria in the resolution, but if you review pages five through eight of the report, I think it, provides the, uh, the detail about why we think that the criteria are met, and I know that the staff report addressed those points as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to testify on this matter? Is there in favor or opposed to this case? Um, anything else from the board? If not, we'll uh, close the public hearing on case number one, 2013 uh, BZA. Um, and we can proceed to have a discussion and deliberation about this case. So I'll open it to the board for comment. Thoughts on this? I think they've done a very thorough job of stating their case and um, um, managing uh, an office building before I went to MSD. I understand the frustrations of repeat offenders and the frustration of constantly having to have the same thing happen over and over and over again. So um, I, I, I think that it was very thorough, very well thought out, and um, obviously the township sheriff uh, support what their plans are. So those are my comments. Yeah, I'll echo those sentiments. And you know, the one that I kept coming back to as I was reading through the packet, and it was a very thorough packet, which is appreciated, is that I. I beyond spending considerable more money, I don't see uh, how the owner's predicament can be feasibly obviated through other methods. So I'm, you know, that's where I fall on this thing. It seems reasonable. Mr. Chairman, the one thing that we did not discuss at length in the, in the testimony was the um, visibility and the, the uh, uh, appearance harm uh, by, uh, by neighbors. But as I toured the area and looked all around, the, the only place where there was any visible uh, access, uh, vision site access into this, this property 
was from across the river a, in another township, and I don't want to say that I am ignoring the concerns of my uh, uh, fellow neighbors to the uh, to the north there. Um, they already have full vision access into the entire complex, um, and the addition of a uh, of a fairly open fence, a chain link fence, does not seem to be a material change to their. Um, to their uh, uh, visual horizon. So I, I think that it is uh, insubstantial that way. And uh, I really appreciated the uh, thoroughness of the report as well. I made a note as I was reading at page uh, five through eight of Mr. Muto's report uh, was very well done and hit all the, uh, the points. But the one uh, point I was um, interested in hearing, and I did get a lot of good information from that, from the testimony, was um, how this property is different or unusual, because um, what the board, uh, or at least I do, and I think the board does, is uh, we hear the, the, uh, the um, policy of our zoning code, which is um, the height of the fence, not necessarily the fence materials. Um, and uh, so the concern was, uh, or at least my thought was, in this area, or would we be setting some kind of precedent, noting that all properties are unique and have unusual characteristics, uh, that we would have uh, the next person? That's why I was asking about the lot next door. But what I did hear quite clearly was uh, this is a uh, unusual business in that there is a high concentration of valuable property. It just goes with the business. It has to be with the vehicles. And unfortunately, then it is uh, at risk. And uh, it's not like they just uh, came in here and said, well, this is the easy fix for us, and we'll just get a variance. It sounds like they've tried just about everything possible. Uh, they did uh, minimize, I think, the uh, area in the front where they'd have chain link. And I did appreciate the comment that the, there was, uh, you know, if you drive down there, uh, the existing fence, the wrought iron, is a substantial fence. And it, it was quite a nice addition to a somewhat industrial area. So I think, uh, you know, they've tried to minimize the impact uh, I, I certainly don't see any issue at all with the enclosure that's largely hidden either. Thank you. And I, I kind of echo all those comments. My, my concern <clears throat> wasn't with the enclosure. My concern was with the fence uh, along the front, um, particularly following the River Downs case, where we mm -hmm. certainly limited it to the areas that were necessary for security. Uh, but I think we've gotten a lot of testimony today that it isn't that while the enclosure will work to secure the higher enclosure to secure certain of their equipment. Uh, there will still have trucks and other things on there, a rather large amount of acreage that need to be protected. And that a fence is a good way to, a higher fence is a good way to protect it. Um, I, I think the other uh, differentiating factor is that uh, for better or for worse, uh, this area of the township is a high crime mm -hmm. area. And if we want to try to uh, protect the businesses that are there, Agree. the commercial base that is there. We have to allow them to take steps to protect themselves um, uh, in, this, in this area. So I'm kind of on, on board with the rest of us, I think. Any further thoughts or comments, or would somebody like to make a motion for us here? Mr. Chairman, I move that this board approve a, uh, a variance uh, for uh, two fences um, in the case of uh, uh, BZA 1-2013. Um, in that the, uh, the variance is not substantial. Um, the essential character of the neighborhood would not be substantially altered, and adjoining properties would not suffer a substantial detriment. The variance would not adversely affect the delivery of government services. Um, the property owner's predicament could not be feasibly obviated, uh, feas economically feasibly obviated through some other method other than the variance. 
and the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting this variance. Um, subject to the, uh, the following conditions. Um, that the construction be completed within uh, one year, and I think that's, uh, that's still plenty of time for the, uh, for the applicant to, uh, to do that, probably be done quicker. And the second uh, would be subject to a, uh, the wrought iron fence and the vegetation addition to be completed within three years. I guess my, uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Uh, discussion? I guess my, my question is whether we should say uh, on the wrought iron fence, if that's the subject of a consent decree already, be completed in accordance with the terms of the consent decree. I, I like that statement better. Agreed. If, it, if there's something within the consent decree right. already discussed that, yeah. And, and, and we typically... Either, either way, it would, it would be... I think it's good to have it in, much like River Downs, where we have in their best efforts to do some, some um, decorative, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, but I, w I would not. Uh, I know there's a lot of time and effort, and none of us were involved, went in on their consent decree, and I wouldn't want to do anything to inadvertently screw that up. Uh, so I would, if, if you would entertain that friendly amendment, to instead reference that it'll be done in accordance with the consent decree. That's a good suggestion. I agree with that. The only other two thoughts that I had is that typically we say start it within a year and complete it within two. I'm not sure in this case it matters because my guess is they're going to get the thing up in a couple of months, so it's probably a, a moot point, but that's generally what we've what we stated. The only other one is that I, I, would, I would like a little bit more language on the owner's predicament cannot feasibly be obviated through some other method, um, and just a statement to the effect of the, the significant step that they've already taken to secure the property. Because certainly they've done, they've spent time and money already, and they've kind of come to this point. I just think there should be some language along those lines, as part of the uh, beyond what they've already done. Then recognize that they have already done. Yeah, it can be feasible yeah. uh, through some other method other than a variance. Beyond, uh, it, it cannot be fe feasibly obviated beyond what they have already done, other than through a variance. Beyond what they've already done, I'm just trying to. And this predicament cannot be feasibly obviated. I think we can reference the testimony, testimony. both in the submissions and in the, the testimony today that indicates that, that despite their efforts, they've not been able to, yes. to do it. Yes. That's the spirit. Yes, okay. that's fair. And a uh, question on the consent decree, then. Um, does the consent decree include... Uh, the wrought iron fence extension and the vegetation addition. I know that it does the vegetation. I'm not positive on the wrought iron fence. Then I, my preference, Mr. Chairman, would be to leave that subject in there um, uh, and, uh, and at least reference the, uh, the consent decree, not to be in conflict with the consent decree. Um, so the language ought to be some, something like, subject to the wrought iron fence and vegetation addition to be completed within three years, provided it does not conflict with the, with the consent decree. I'm of the mind to not have any restrictions on the, I think that was almost an aside mentioned as part of the consent decree, as part of the testimony that Mr. Bailey provided. And I don't, there was no reference to that in this packet as part of the variance, I would rather not put that limitation on the property owner. I think I'm in agreement that the fencing is required. They've taken every step they can. The enclosure is fine. The fence along the road is fine. You know, down the road, if they add frontage to it, it sounds like that's the plan. Hey, even better. If they never do, I'm still fine with it the way it is. Jeannie? I agree that I'm, I'm okay with the as things are. I don't know, and maybe Brian brought up a good point, that um, since we don't know exactly it's in the consent decree, um, the statement for the extension of the fence, and it was not brought into our original packet, and it was just really more of this is what we're planning on doing. I do think that in the spirit of making that whole area look better, that they'll uh, um, 
perform that function and hopefully when they don't have things stolen from them they'll be able to afford it more quickly um, so maybe we should keep out the restriction for the um, uh, wrought iron fence and the planting from this grant of variance Mr. Ellis um, uh, <laughs> I, I like the thought uh, but I guess I'm more comfortable with the idea since the company and the township have already been down that road. Uh, it was not brought to our attention in substantial detail, nor do I think we really have the ability to modify that. So I think I would agree with that as an aspiration. It was mentioned by the company, but as far as I think this board, if we approve this, need to be comfortable with the idea that it might be as we approve it and to the extent they must comply with the consent decree that's largely out of our hands and we're hopeful that uh, it will be screened I think the company wants to do that so I would say um, that we uh, uh, reference it more generically I think as you suggested Mr. Oberschmidt with all due respect to you Mr. Hayes that um, that uh, any that the future screening uh, fencing or what there may be be uh, done in conformance with the time guidelines of the consent decree. So that's where I'd be. I guess I'm on yeah, Mr. I would have, Sa I would have Sanders approved report. it without the wrought iron. Uh, if that hadn't ever come right. up, I would have still approved it. So I, I wouldn't be comfortable adding that as a condition as opposed to, but. Uh, but Fred, you, you've made the, the motion, and once again, for those in the audience, our procedures in this case are to do a straw vote to allow us to uh, have this discussion, and then uh, staff will actually present us with uh, a draft resolution based on our straw vote that we can uh, tinker the language with before we take an official action. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I am comfortable with striking that restriction from the from my motion. Okay, we have a, uh, what about the, the timing? Is it gonna be one year or one year and two? I, I think one year is fine. I think they'll probably okay. get it done even quicker than that. All right, all right. Uh, so we have a, 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 a straw uh, motion uh, slightly amended, and we have a second on I'll that? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Betty, will you take a roll on that? Aye. Fred Hayes. Aye. Brian Sanders. Aye. Aye. Rick Aye. All right. We will take a brief recess while the staff uh, prepares a draft uh, resolution for us to uh, formally look at and play with the language on. And we'll, uh, that'll take us a few minutes, I think, and then we'll readjourn. Thank you. Probably give us a chance to introduce ourselves to the extra. Right. Plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, come back into session and uh, uh, look at the uh, draft of the uh, decision in uh, case uh, 1, 2013.
have <coughs> one correction. Mm -hmm. On the back side, it's got 6301 Kellogg Road. The top. Oh. And it's wrong BZA number. Mm, good catch. I'm wondering if on number four, if the board might agree with this, that I think the second sentence there should be stated more generally. It's not that they just have tried to GPS. They've tried multiple things. They've tried security guards. They've tried lighting. They've tried GPS tracking, video. So I think we should note there, one, they've tried multiple efforts, and two, that the, it can't be feasibly obviated because the unique nature of this business mm -hmm. calls for a large concentration of very valuable and, I don't know what the word is. Easily fenced. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not quite sure how to say it in resolution form, but items that are, they're mobile, if you will. And that, that's what's made this business suffer a hardship. I think that's an important point. So I'd suggest changing that second sentence to reflect that. Yeah, and it's funny, Brian. I, I made the similar comment. I had scratched out the, had the property observed overnight, placed GPS tracking units and equipment, scratched those words out and replaced them with taking a number of security measures. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that we didn't limit it to just that. We certainly heard a lot. So, uh, so if we said the company has previously taken a number of security measures, uh, but I guess it's due to the nature of the business. Is that would you want to put that in then too? I, I would say the nature of the business and the, but the large concentration of valuable equipment that they must store in such a manner. Yeah. But due to the nature of the business and the volume of, um, or the, the amount, rather, of valuable equipment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Has not been able to deter the break-ins. Yes. Did you get that, Allison? Mm -hmm. does, that, does that work? Yeah. Good suggestion. I thought that Mr. U, was it Tony Muto. Muto. Muto? Thank you. I thought he referenced another um, section of the zoning resolution. Did I miss that somewhere? I think he might have referenced one. He uh, may have. But I think about he, their was, initials I think he in was creating middle. an argument, Jeannie, that that the that the eight-foot solid fence requirement for um, certain screening and certain oh, circumstances. Right. I think he was using that as an okay. arg Thank argument you. for why we should. I thought we were kept. Yeah, because he referenced a section that related to the. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, his, the 184 was the, uh, it was the sequence of considerations that we must apply in okay. granting the variance. Thank you. And Thank that's, you. that's in section 184. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Any other change? Got those? Yep. Not uh, entertain a motion on the, what we've got presented to us. <coughs> <coughs> what the heck is that? That's the, uh, 
and he had to be created with the That's, ha that's happened before. Don't suffer the consequences. Mommy's happy. Mommy's having a french fry. Yes, she. At least it was a harmless advertisement. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Uh, we were saying we would entertain a, a motion uh, on this uh, the final revised uh, resolution. Well, I'll make a motion. Case 1-2013 uh, BZA that the board approve the requested variances uh, as provided in the uh, submitted uh, resolution as uh, modified by um, the board and and journalize thank you I have a, a second and a second second aye 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 Aye. Aye. Um, any further business? Having already established that the revisions to the bylaws are still uh, with our legal counsel for review. <laughs> <laughs> Save Mr. Hayes <laughs> asking that question. I appreciate that. <laughs> I hope we get more than an hour or two to review them when, when they come <laughs> we'll in. We'll get them ahead of time. <laughs> Black line. No further business? We'll stand adjourned. Thank you all very much.